Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Push straight. Can yeah, my team please see us? Whoa, what plays are in hand today? There's a deep. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love this beat. Very tragical man. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. A play there is my lord. Some ten words along which is a breeze and I have known. And by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. We will see that play. No, my lord, oh lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over. I will hear that play. But not just yet, our play begins four days earlier. Then these three couples weren't yet married and the, and these workmen hadn't begun to rehearse their play. We are in Athens, Greece, over 3,000 years ago. Four days ago, as Theseus and Hippolyta look forward to the happy day, they meet Aegis, Hermes' father, and he is not happy. In Athens, the law says that a father can decide which man his daughter should marry. If she refuses, the only option are death or to become a nun. Good Aegis. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation am I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath be rich the bosom of my child. What say you, Hermia? I would my father look but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. I am, my lord, as well drive as he. My love is more than his. I am beloved by beauteous Hermia. Dem Demetrius cannot stand her Helena, but she dotes on him. I must confess, I've heard so much. Take time to pause for Hermia. Until the next new moon, the ceiling day visits my love and me. Demetrius, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I mean, the course of true love never did run smooth. But Lysander has a plan. He has a rich aunt who lives 20 miles away where the strict rules of Athens do not apply. If Hermia can sneak out of her house tomorrow night and meet Lysander in the woods, they can run away together. No sooner have they agreed than Helena turns up. God speed, fair Helena. Call you me fair? Demetrius loves you fair. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Take comfort, no more shall he see my face. My son and myself will fly this place. And at the time lovers fly, doth still conceal, through Athens' gate we devise to steal. And in the wood, the dawn of our retreat, Lysander and myself shall meet. We will, my heart. Helena, adieu. As you do on him, Demetrius dote on you. I tell Demetrius about fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood would he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanked, it is a dear expense. company here. Here is a scroll of every man's name. First good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on. Marry our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work I show you. Now Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver, ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself for most gallant for love. I will ask what it is in the true performing of it. Francis Flute, the Bellas Manda. Here, Peter Prince. Flute, you must take Fisby on you. What is Fisby? A wandering knight? It is the lady who Pyramus must love. Nay, Thace, let me not play a woman. I have a beard. Coming. Let me play Fisby too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Fisby, Fisby. Ah, Pyramus, my lover did, my Fisby did, and Lady did. No, no, you must play Pyramus, and Flute, you Fisby. Well, proceed. 
Now the tinker. Are you Peter Quinn? Snug the joiner? Yeah, Peter Quinn. You shall play the lion's part. How do the lion pass written? Lion slow. I'll study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me let me play the lion's part too. I will roar. That I'll make the duke say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! You can play no part but Pyramus. Masters, here are your scripts. Meet me tomorrow. Meet me tomorrow night. Here we shall rehearse. I pray you, fail me not. Take pains, be perfect, and you. The wood has become a popular destination, but unknown to the lovers who plan to meet the all amateur actors playing to rehearse there. The wood is already the playground of more creatures. Fairies. But Oberon, the king of the fairies, is not getting on with Titania, his queen. They both want a little changeling child to be their page boy. It'll look by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous, Oberon? I do but beg that little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. I do not part with him. Give me that boy. Not for thy very kingdom. Fairies, away. Oberon does not like to be outwitted, so he calls a mischief maker whose name is Puck and sends him to find the magic flower. When he squeezes the juice from the flower onto Titania's eyelids, she will fall in love with the first creature she sees when she wakes. While she's distracted by this creature, he'll persuade her to give him the changeling boy. When Oberon hears people approaching, he makes himself invisible. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. I tell you I have not, nor I cannot love you. Couldn't even for that, do I love you? Neither will. I am sick when I look at thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. Oh, poor girl. I'm going to make him fall in love with her. When Puck returns with the flower, Oberon takes on to squeeze on Titania's eyelids. But what he's just seen gives him another idea to use a love potion to make Demetrius love Helena. Take now some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdain for you. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next week he aspires, maybe the lady. Fear not, my lord. Come send me to sleep. Then to your office and let me rest. Titania isn't the only one who is tired. Lysander has lost his way and he and Hermia are exhausted, so they decide to sleep until the morning. Here is my bed, and sleep give thee all his rest. And with half I wish the wish's eyes to be pressed. Puck comes searching for Demetrius so he can put the love potion on his eyelids so he can fall in love with Helena. He doesn't realise the man sleeping on the ground is Lysander, who is in love with Hermia. This is he, my master said, despise the Athenian maid. Draw upon thy eyes I throw, all this charm of own. Lysander, if you live, 
awake. And run through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake. Not harm you, but Helena, I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? Good troth, you do me wrong. Fare you well. Hermia, you sleep there and never come near me again. I'm going after Helena. Help me, Lysander, help me! What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? No? Then I'll perceive you are not nigh. Either death or I'll find you immediately. Hark has done what his master has asked for and found an Athenian youth. But Oberon wanted Dramatius, not Lysander, to fall in love with Helena. With Titania still sleeping nearby, the workmen arrived to rehearse their play. Are we all wet? Pat Pat! And here's a marvellous convenient place for a rehearsal. Just then, Puck arrives unnoticed. He soon finds a chance to make mischief. Right, Pyramus, you begin. What's your finish to into enter into that way? Speak, Pyramus. This be the flowers of odious savour sweet. Odorous. Odorous savour savour sweet. But half half my breath. But hark, a voice. Aye, but well you must understand, he goes back to see a noise that he has heard. Most radiant pyramids, triumphant they are, as true as tours, I meet, I meet thee, pre pyramus, thy minus too. Ninus is too, man. You speak all your words at once, cues and all. Pyramus, your cue is never tired. Oh, that true as tours, that would never tire. I shall sing to make them hear that I am not afraid. The oozel cocks are black of you with orange tawny bill. What, what, what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The fossil with his throat so true, the red with little quill. I love that song. I love thee. We think, sisters, you should have very little reason for that. Thou art as wise as thou art as beautiful. Fairies! Hail, mortal. Hail, hail. Hail. Do whatever he, do whatever he says, take him to my tree. Oberon is waiting in another part of the woods. When Puck arrives, he tells Oberon how he has played a trick on some actors by giving one called Bottom an ass's head, and how Bottom singer had then woken up Titania. So it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved the ass. This was up better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. Puck believes his son was over-ordered and made Demetrius fall in love with Helena. Hermia is certain Demetrius killed Lysander whilst he was sleeping. Hast thou slain him, madame? Hence will be never numbered among men. You spend your passion on Miss Moon. I'm not guilty for Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught I can tell. Stand close. This is the same opinion. This is the woman, but not this the man. I pray thee, tell me that he is well, and what shall I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. There is no follow and claim this fame. Therefore, I will remain. What hast thou done? It is obvious to Oberon that Puck had made a mistake. The wrong man has now fallen in love with Hermia. He sends Puck to find Helena as soon as possible. 
In the meantime, he drops the love potion into Dromitius's eyelids. He will make sure that Helena is the first one that he sees when he is awake. Oh, divine! Fair Helen, my love, my life, my soul. Fair Helena. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you are all bent to set against me for your merriment. Both of you are rivals and love Hermia. And both of the rivals come to mock Helena? Just then, Hermia arrived. You can't have well from you thief of love. Why have you come by that and stolen my love's heart from him? Fie, fie! You counterfeit! You puppet! You puppet? Why so? Because I'm so small and so low. How low am I? I'm not yet, yet so low for my nose can reach into thine eyes. Let her not strike me. You may perhaps think that because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower? Hark! Again! Though she be but little, she is fierce. Little? Again? Nothing but low and little. Let me come to her. Get gone, you hobbit, you minimus, you bead, you acorn. <coughs> now follow if thy verse, so we can work out who will marry Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go next to you. Oberon is not pleased with Puck's mischief-making, which has set the women and men at each other's throats. He tells Puck to tire everyone out and gives him some different flower magic for Lysander. And whilst Puck is busy here, he will persuade Titania to give him the changeling boy. Up and down, up and down, I will be you up and down. I am here in the fields and town goblin lead them up and down. The next day is Theseus and Hippolyta's wedding day, which is also the day that Hermia has to decide who she should marry. Early in the morning, Theseus and Hippolyta are, are out hunting with Aegis. Good morning, friends. How's it, my lord? Okay, you all stand up. My lord, I cannot truly say how I have got here. I came here with Hermia. Our intent was to be gone from her. Enough, enough, my lord. You have enough. They would have stolen away Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. I only love Helena, not Hermia. You are in luck. Aegis, I don't make the rules here. These two couples will get married. Let's go back to Athens and have a party. Perfectly tough. When my key comes, call me and I will answer. What's my life? I have had a most rare vision. I will get Peter Quint to write a ballad of this dream. It should be called Bottom's Dream because it has no bottom. Little later back in Athens. Have you sent to Bottom's house yet? Is he come home yet? Masters, the ticket's coming from the temple and there's two or three lords and lady more married. But where is Bottom? You cannot do the place is not here. 
Where are these lights? <gasps> on bottom, our most happy hour. Masters, the, the Duke has died. Dear actors, eat no onions, no garlic. Before we are at our sweet breath, our play is preferred. Which is how three couples and not just one came to be married that, that day and entertained that evening. I will hear that play. I will snap my name to present a wall, and such a wall I would have been thing that had in it a cranny hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did often whisper very secretly. Pyramus is in the wall. Silence! O thou, O wall, O sweet, O lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with my eye. <laughs> Thanks, courteous wall. But what, what, what see I? No things do I see. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. <clears throat> o wall, o wall, full often hast thou heard my moan. As true as. <clears throat> o wall, as true as yours, thou heard, thou heard my moan. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stone. I hear, a, I see your voice. I hear my Fisbee's face. Fisbee! My love, thou, thou art my love, I think. Wilt, wilt thou at that lily's too? Meet me straight away. I come with that delay. This is Minnie's tomb. Where is my love? <laughs> Because I pity the man. Thus I die. Thus I. Thus I die. Thus. Thus. Now am I dead. Now am I fled. Now. Tom, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die. 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 I see my love for dead, my dove. When Pyramus dies, farewell, friend. Let this be end. The lion is left to bear the dead. I and wall too. No, I show you. The wall is down, but it pleases you to see the epilogue. <laughs> no epilogue, I pray you. Love is to bed, tis almost fairy time. Sweet friends to bed. Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray. Trip away, make not stay, meet me all by break of day. Three shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended. Though you have slumbered here, why these visions did appear, and this weekend I do dream, no more wielding but a dream. <laughs>